All right, let's turn our attention to some observations and questions that bear on transposon, indeed on genome evolution. So for example, genes for proteins typically represent only 1 or 2 percent of a eukaryotic genome. We've seen that before. So a question is, is most of the non-coding DNA in a genome non-essential to life? And if that's true, then are all those transposons also functionless? Are transposons in fact junk DNA or, or worse, selfish DNA whose sole imperative is to replicate themselves? And if that's true, then why do transposons exist at all? Why hasn't natural selection gotten rid of them? Given the propensity of transposition to raise havoc in genomes, how do we tolerate them and how do we survive them? Well, here is some of what we know about transposon evolution. Enzyme similarities exist between DNA transposons and retrotransposons. So for example, transposases and integrases that catalyze transposon insertion into target DNA share amino acid sequence similarity and similarity in the domain structure involved in integration. Among retrotransposons themselves, the same is true for reverse transcriptases. DNA sequence comparisons across transposons reveal that they occur in families of related sequences, indicating that during evolution, groups of sequences retain similarities while others diverge to have somewhat different sequences. Also, some transposon family members, like Mariner for example, exist in almost all organisms across the eukaryotic spectrum. We noted the structure of the TY element, uh, and we noticed that it had a protein called GAG, which, if you remember, encodes a protein that will encapsulate the cDNA transcript of the retrotransposon. So the yeast TY element is an example of a retrotransposon that actually encapsulates its cDNA copy. While the protein-coded element in this case remains in the cell, the TY gag gene seems to be serving the same function as genes for retroviral coat proteins. So what can we conclude? DNA and RNA transposons share a common ancestry, and furthermore, transposons have been around for much of evolutionary history. I suppose you could also make a preliminary conclusion here that retrotransposons and retroviruses might share common ancestry as well. So we can align retrotransposon sequences and retroviral sequences. So here we see aligned a retrotransposon transposase and a retroviral integrase sequence, and they show clearly a great deal of similarity, including a common DDE domain created when amino acids shown here in blue come together during polypeptide folding. Genetic engineering experiments that alter any one of these amino acids destroy the transposase or integrase activities, blocking experimental transposition or experimental retroviral infection. This clearly supports retrovirus and retrotransposon common ancestry. So now the question is, which came first? Phylogenetic analysis of retrotransposon nucleotide sequences can shed some light on this question. The phylogenetic tree seen here is based on the alignment of many retroviral and retrotransposon nucleic acid sequences. Important nodes, or branch points, in the evolution of the elements are circled in red. These nodes represent putative common ancestors of retroviruses and retrotransposons. Since viruses cannot exist without cells to infect, the most likely explanation of these data is that the common ancestors of retroviruses and retrotransposons must have been retrotransposons. Some retrotransposons in the distant past, surely one with a protein coat, must have escaped the confines of the cell to become infectious virus particles.